Well hi and welcome to my office. Today I'm taking you for a walk around the reserve just for the hell of it. I just want to show you actually what's going on around here at the minute. It's summer stinking up the last couple of days and it's been hard to come out into the reserve. Really, really hot out here. But anyway, it's a beautiful cool morning at 6 o'clock. A little bit of a breeze, it's about 18 degrees. I'm coming out for a walk before it gets too hot. Right, so across the creek here in this kangaroo paw bush, you'll see New Holland honey eaters flying in there. There's the pair right now, just on cue. Finally, I've been able to film a pair nesting. Never been able to do that before. I've come across them a couple of times, but I can't film them because they're in a bad position. I have a stiff shit policy. If I can't see into the nest properly, walk away. You'll find another one one day. But this pair have just put it in a beautiful position where I could film it without disturbing the nest, the surroundings around the nest itself. So I've been having a lot of fun filming them. XF 400 that I've just bought, uh, testing it out. It's um, filling a gap for me. It's not a professional camera, but it's giving me what I need anyway. And that is what we're doing right now. Speaking of the camera, my skin's not reflective and that's why it's great high dynamic range made on it. It's been enabled me to capture some really arty stuff that I haven't been able to really get before. Backlit subjects, uh, yeah, awesome. So speaking of these guys, they've been educating me on how they bring up their young, but they also educated me on something else. There's a, a beautiful fern there, it's very low, really rich in colour at the minute, and it was shaking. I could see all the leaves being shaken up. So I brought the camera around and there was New Holland honey eater having a shower. It was coming up underneath the fronds and hitting them so that they would drop the dew onto it. It was awesome. Also getting on top of the fern leaves and shaking their wings and vibrating all the uh, moisture up. So that was just beautiful. So they've been educating me and uh, let's uh, stop waffling on there. And I'm going to take you over to where a snake is. This is its area. I've got to be really careful, especially later on in the day. But let's go and have a look at uh, what I think is a copperhead snake. I keep forgetting to go online and uh, really check and make sure that it is standing on this log. Where the snake lives. <laughs> Want to have a look? All right, let's see whether he's home. I don't think he's pulling me out. At the minute he's probably asleep. That is where he lives. In there. It's not a real big snake, but uh, he'd uh, kill me, that's for sure. All right, so that's where I cross the creek. As you can see, got my gear there. Across the creek and over to the New Holland honey it is, and where the agile antichinus females nest and uh, further winter. Now, around here with this snake, it's pretty dangerous, so I'll let you have a look around. So if uh, a lot of people actually come fishing here, so it's pretty dangerous for them. If I see anyone, I'll tell them, but I haven't seen anyone in here at the minute. But it's about being smart when you're around snakes. <laughs> Don't turn your back on them for starters. But um, understanding that in the mornings they're going to be sluggish, they're not going to come out a fair way from where they actually uh, stay the night, in the, like a burrow, which it's got this log. Let's move on to something else a bit more interesting than bloody snake. 
This is a part of a reserve that I come to about this time of year and then stay right through the winter filming. This tree here is where the agile intercoinous females come to nest for the winter. So a whole heap of them will come together anywhere from 20 to 8. 8 seems to be a general number but they do get up to some higher numbers. And this is where they come. This is their favourite tree. But at the minute it's uh, surrounded by scotch thistle. Thanks to our uh, English history, they brought the bloody thing out with them and uh, it just goes berserk like that if you don't keep a handle on them. And they are, it's just thousands of them around here at the minute taking over. But anyway, I'm going to knock all that down so you can have a proper look. We've got yellow robin carrying on here. It must have a nest because it's, you would have heard just before it's really chappering away. So there might be a kookaburra there and that pisses them off. Well I thought I'd do a selfie again, it's just a bit easier for me to show you all this. That is where they nest, you can see the split in the tree, where they go in. So I'm set up again to do a bit of filming. Now, over the years I have absolutely been tortured with it being freezing cold, pouring out of rain so that I could further my studies with the Agile. This uh, particular nest has helped me out a lot. Really understand what goes on with females, what they do during the winter months, they're off, off season. And this is how I achieve that. You can see this here frame I've made so that um, I can put a tarp over and sit in sort of comfort, <laughs> at least I'm not getting wet. Now I'm getting a few drops of rain, so I better move on. It uh, wasn't forecast, but yeah, a few drops. Right, I'll take you over to another place where I have a nesting box, where I film the Agile Antichinus. Uh, a female called Possum educated me. Learned a lot from her. Just tripped over, hidden branch in the ferns there. Oh, the mozzies are having a ball on me now. My legs are all scraped, taking the skin off I'd say. Anyway, enough whinging, I'm at my destination. Well here we are, at the nesting box that I built for the Agile Anticline, so that I could study them properly. You can have a look up higher, there it is. So I stand on the platform camera fitted on the top there so that I can study them properly, film in infrared mode. But I sit right here normally. I'm not filming in a nesting box. I can film them coming up and down. I'll put a little a bit of honey on the log just there and uh, watch them go about their business. Film it, document it, write it all down as well. In the, at the minute, the only thing nesting in there some sugar gliders that have uh, taken it over which is a bit of a bugger because I really wanted uh, possum a female that educated me on how the agile anticons bring up the young um, she was built a nest and was all ready to go and these buggers came in and uh, took it over now I've got something interesting here there is a uh, blue wren female with an insect in its mouth and the weight's carrying on. I'm pretty sure there's a nest just there. But anyway, let's just quickly. Yeah, okay, and there's this thing here. Right, so we're going live. You're going to see this for the first time, like I am. This nest. It's just here in the grass. I've just seen where the mother was going in. Let's have a look. There it is. There it is, right down there. Mum, I 
it's back on. All right, so I can't, I can't film that one. I've got plenty of uh, them from a few weeks ago. One of the videos that I've done <laughs> last month, I think. So they're uh, in a predicament there that I can't film. And it's grass, so if you try and disturb anything, it's going to wreck it. That is in grave danger, foxes, this burrow, foxes den further over. Uh, they come frequently come through here, and also the agile antichinus, quite partial to baby birds. They actively hunt them out, and being a foot off the ground, very lucky they've got this far. But actually, what I just seen in one of the chicks. Uh, could actually fly the coop within the next three days, I would say. Now this location is where I've seen Agile Anticonus, but I've never bothered to come and really check it out properly because I have so many of them out the back of the reserve. That's where the bulk of them are. That's where I've got my education from them over there. It's just much better for me. I'm right near the track here, so I'm getting people walking past me every now and then. Almost out of the reserve. Now, this tree here is hollow. It's an old dead wattle tree. Half of it's on the ground there. And I've always been sus about them nesting in here. And during the winter, so around June, I lost contact with all the females that I had over at, over at the back of the reserve. I just haven't been able to find them. Uh, yeah, so it's been a very lean run, I'm getting the DTs, not being able to photograph them and film them. But two weeks ago I found this lot here. So there's two juveniles left in the nest and they're females. These females are so small, tiny. So I've been filming them, having a bit of fun and getting some footage and I will be trying to get some more footage of them tonight going about the business searching for food. That's something I haven't been able to really film properly, but here I can. It's just open, much more open than I had before. So I can follow them a bit, so I'll try and do that tonight if it's not too hot. <laughs> but anyway, it's just a great location. I had a lot of fun sitting here listening to the birds. All right, you are watching a live event. I'm filming right at the minute. I'm using a 7D Mark II to film myself. Just up there is a grey thrush. Walking up the trail here, and I saw the male shaking his wings, greeting the female as she came up onto a branch not far from me. So I just watched for a minute to see what would happen. And it flew down into the nest. She's just, she's just come out. The male's going in now. I have never been this close to grey thrushes. They don't seem to be worried about me being here. Anyway, I'm going to switch this camera off, turn off the 7D Mark II and go, I'll talk to you back on this once they've gone. Well, that was pretty exciting. Didn't expect that at all. Now, the male and female just flew off. So I thought I'd talk to you. And as I'm setting up, the males come back up there. They're, they're sentry. They watch everything that goes on around near the nest uh, and they'll tell the female what's happening and uh, as she comes in she'll give a low pitch to ask him whether things are okay and he'll reply to her eventually she'll come back down but I was just very lucky before they took no notice of me set myself up I'm six meters away rare very rare to get this close but I might not get that same chance now see him up there he's watching me oh that was him he's given out a shriek warning so maybe it's time for me to nick off well i thought i'd hang around with the gray thrush for a while because just before it absolutely bucketed down with rain so i just bunked it down put my wet weather gear on and just waited out the storm but i saw a composition come into focus and what i'm talking about with this composition is uh, something I've been mucking around with for a little while and that's very bit more arty way of going about filming wildlife. Normally I just film them, document what they're doing, but in this case it's doing the same but with a bit more arty or flair to it. 
And what I'm talking about is focus transitioning. So something in the foreground, a nice composition, then in something even more of interest in the background. But that would, the background gets blurred out first and then you transition over to it, it's all in focus. So that's what I've been trying to do here, but I've picked an absolute mongrel of a, <laughs> of a bit of uh, artwork to work with. And that is, oh, just bring it around, this camera's getting heavy. All right, so on to the monitor here now. This is what I'm trying to achieve. Fern frong just in front of me here with a water droplet on it. And there's a lot of insects flying onto it every now and then. And in the background is my main composition, my, fi my finished composition with the grey thrush landing into the nest. But everything has to come together. It has to be insects on there to make it really interesting. And that water dro droplet on the fern, on the frong there, has to stay there. So when the bird lands, which is what it's going to do very soon, sitting up there waiting for me to finish up talking, I press the preset button and bang into the background it goes so that's what I've been doing for an hour and a half I'm nearly out of batteries here nine attempts I've had nine attempts I think that last one I finally got it so hopefully it's good uh, yeah so it's been a bit of a challenge for me <laughs> patience you can see Insects are on there, birds turned up, insects fly off as it flies down, so it's been a real hard one. Um, I've actually got another, oh, I've changed hands. I've been doing it with another one further over, another nest that I've been watching for a while, and that's with the yellow-faced honey eaters. Uh, that's not as challenging, though, that's a neat, bit easier one. It's just a matter of waiting for the bird to come back to feed the chicks. I've had a lot of fun doing this video, hope you enjoyed it yourselves. Now before I leave you, there will be a whole heap of film clips and photographs that I've taken recently in the last month, so in the summer months. So hang around for that. But anyway, if you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. It'll also be here on the end screen as well. And if you want to go and have a look at all the things I've been doing over the years, click on my icon down below, somewhere down there. Uh, and yeah, there's over 70 videos to choose from. There must be something there of interest here. Me teaching a bit of photography, birds in flight, flash photography. But really, all this on YouTube is about me practicing at speaking to the camera and getting more confident in that area. And just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. See ya.